Hey y'all, it's Christy Cook from Tea Dottles. Today, I thought I would do the Flash Your Stash Challenge, um, which came from Terry at Yarn Joy Podcast and Petra at the Sosa Family. Um, they had five questions that they did and they showed their stash and I thought I would do that today. Um, especially since my podcasts will probably not come out until Sunday because I am going thrift store shopping in the morning, Saturday morning. This is Friday evening. Uh, so I'd like to share anything that I might find there. So it may be, I don't know what time I'll get back. So <laughs> it'll probably be Sunday before my podcast uploads and I get finished with it. Anyway. Back to the point of this video. Um, I'm going to answer these questions. Um, some will be answered better once you actually see what's going on. I'm trying to do this in between the stacks of fabric and things on my <laughs> table because I've been busy sewing bags for my shop update, which is coming up this weekend. Okay, so the first question for this Flash Your Stash Challenge and this is about yarn, your yarn stash, just to be clear, not my fabric stash or my other stashes of things that are everywhere. <laughs> so the first question is, what do you store your yarn in? I have several different things I store my yarn in. You can see one right back here, which I have some yarn in and some fabric in. It's a shoe. This is a closet shoe hanger um but i also have a sort of dresser with bins it'll make more sense when you see it over here and then i have some off this way i have some under the shelf bins that i store things in and then i have a plastic bin over here <laughs> that i have some things in and then over there i have a fabric basket type thing that has some stuff in it. So I have stashes of yarn all around my craft space. Has not managed to escape my craft space yet, except for finished yarn projects. So at least there's that. Um, do you sort it by brand, color, weight, or content? Okay. Most things I sort by color. My fabric is sorted by color and kind of... Um, well, my quilting fabric, I kind of sort into fabric, into color bins. Uh, my other fabric is sorted by, why am I talking about fabric? It doesn't matter. My closet is sorted by col colors, um, my clothing closet. Um, yarn, I don't really do that with. Yarn is more sorted by weight. I find that easier because if I'm looking for a specific weight for a project, I know where to look for the most part so my my yarn is sorted more by weight um I'm not by brand or color it's by weight um do you like to keep basic colors or brands of yarn on hand or do you only buy yarn when a with a particular project in mind okay sometimes I buy yarn with a project in mind usually I buy it because I like it or it's on sale <laughs> I, I don't really keep I have some base what would be considered basic yarns but I don't do projects usually that require me to have basic yarn on on hand like a lot of amigurumi or things like that I do them occasionally so I'd have to say no I really don't uh, keep a basic colors because I like all kinds of colors so I don't I don't know what I would consider basic colors really but anyway where do you store your scraps and what are the things you use them for I have a zippered which I'll show you in a moment it's you know the zippered bags that sheets or quilts not quilts sheets or blankets come out of sometimes I have scraps in there 
um, the very small scraps that most people throw away, I have a bin that I keep those in because I do use them for art projects. Um, I do like to use yarn in my sewing projects. So that's typically what I use them for. And I will show you some yarn cakes I have over here that are longer scraps that I knotted and made a whole cake out of. And I will use that for a crochet project or perhaps a knit. I am learning to knit. Um, and the last question is, do you inventory, inventory your yarn? If, if so, how? Well, if you've been watching the podcast, you know that I, at the beginning of the year, I made an Excel chart for my yarn. I went through all my yarn. I wrote down everything about the yarn. Well, so I took pictures of the labels, which made it easier than trying to write down everything. And now I have an Excel chart, which lists the brand, the the type from the brand because every brand has different types of yarn uh then the color and then how much i have of it the weight of it which crochet or knitting hook is good for it how much yardage is on there i made a whole chart so that i could see how much yardage of yarn i had and i have to update that for new yarn that has come in my dog is talking Hang on, y'all. Okay. I had to get him to, to quiet down a bit. I don't know what he's barking about. But anyway. my so, so, yes, I do sort it that way. And it's made it very easy. When I'm looking at a project and I'm like, hmm, I think I have the yarn for this. But I don't know if I have enough. I can look on there and see exactly what I have without having to dig through the various areas that I keep my yarn. So, uh I really enjoy having that. Um, it's quite easy to get the totals in, and when I have a whip or a work in progress, I can ha I have a different page for that. And then when it's finished, I put it on a finished object page so I can just look back and see what I did over the year, and then take that yarn yardage out of my total. So now I'm going to flip y'all around, and we're going to start looking at my stash. Okay. Okay. I'm starting over here in this corner of my sewing room, or my craft room, rather. I shouldn't call it sewing room. I do everything in here. Um, these are the bins I was talking about before. I'm going to try not to move too fast when I'm showing this. But I bought these bins. They are under-shelf storage bins, and I got a whole bunch of them for a dollar each at a thrift store. And if I zoom in a little bit, you can see they're kind of blue-looking because I spray-painted them, even though it didn't cover it all the way, but... I just didn't want them to be white, but this bin right here is cottons. Um, there, it's mostly for dishcloths and things like that. There are some smaller weights in there, but they're mostly the same weight. Now, the next bin is also cotton. It's a Pima cotton, and then I have a couple of blends in there. And then this next bin is fur, fun fur, mostly fun furs. There's some some leftover sock yarn stuck up in that bin but most of this is fun fur and I'm gonna move you straight down to this corner if you're a member of my uh, tea dolls makers Facebook group I did a whole tour of my craft room in there if you want to take a look at that now this stuff in the corner is this funky yarn I bought a long time ago that I have yet to complete anything in it has a bunch of different yarn weights and yarn types in it so that's what's in that bin. This bin is mostly worsted weight scrap. Uh, scraps that I've wound into balls or stuff. That random skein of sugar bush is stuck in there because it was in one of my project bags for some reason. And I, that's just where I stuck it. And if we come right down here. These are uh kind of specialty yarns i guess you want to say um this is a super wash bulky this is like a in between a worsted weight and bulky but it's like these are smaller balls which is what i tend to keep over here I try to divide them by certain types of yarn but sometimes they get mixed up like these but these are all kind of special different yarns and then over here we have these are uh all these over here on this side are 
silk yarns from darn good yarn that I've caked up for projects this is a yarn I got from Hershner's that I've debated on buying more of because I haven't tried it out it was a different blend that I hadn't tried before and then all of this in the corner is my baby alpaca lace weight yarn that I have um I do have a project in mind for this finally but I've had that for years so mostly what's over here in these bins is smaller balls of yarn right um I do try to put them together based on what they are but this is going to be where I keep uh, scrap balls and smaller skeins of yarn all right I'm over back across here and this little shoe rack I did have like little project sewing projects stuffed in it but I've been slowly working through those and I've been putting my special yarns in here which are the hand dyed yarns um that's what I've been putting in the empty slots over here so this is from Cirella this is from um Lattes and Llamas um my Malabrigo is in there as well as the yarn I got from my first yarn club this year on Etsy um and then we come down and I have the hand dyed yarn from my February yarn club and then I just stuck this Karen Pantone I just got in there and then on the bottom I have sorry that's swinging now that's the yarn I got from my fiber share partner it's not hand dyed but it's in a hank so that's what I'm trying to do with this is to keep my hank yarns in it um, once I finish cleaning out all my sewing projects so now we're gonna come right down here and y'all my floor is covered in thread because I've been sewing but this this right here this one on top is the bin I was talking about that I keep all my very small thread ends in it's just a plastic snap top thin plastic bin that I keep them in I'm gonna move that out the way and then this right here is this has all my scrap yarn cakes I've wound up so all of these in here are scrap yarn cakes um let's see it better on the bottom maybe so that's what's in there and I love these little so this came with a, a plaid throw in it is what it says so when I'm using the blanket I can store other stuff in these things which are great and now this plastic bin here is full of mostly my bulky weight yarn okay so <laughs> some of it I leave in the plastic if I'm not using it yet but this is all like number six number fives or number sixes down in here I got line brand I've got some sprinkle cakes in here. You can look down in there. I've got t-shirt yarn in here. I've pretty much crammed as much as I could down in here. See, I've got lots of these sprinkle cakes. They're just way down in there because I really love them. And if I find them, they're usually on sale because they don't make them anymore as far as I know. And so then I just keep them. So that's what's in this bin is my bulky and super bulky yarns well most of it some of it doesn't fit in there <laughs> so i'm gonna put this back over here and i forgot up under this table here you can see this other kind of rack and everything all that's in there is all my mary maxim kits that i've gotten so far because i've only managed to make one of them so that's what's in that bin and then in this bag is yarn for uh, a sweater I want to make. And I'll come straight up like this. Back over in that corner again on the floor. You'll see all my whip bags. Because I don't have anywhere to put them besides <laughs> in a pile like that. So that's where they're at. So let's come past my messy table. 
And we're going to come over here to where most of my yarn is. Y'all have to excuse my floor is a mess. Now, in this box here, I've showed it before on one of my podcasts, is all yarn that's designated for giveaways or to donate or what have you. So, that's what's in that box. When I did my clear out, that's, I filled up this box. And I have already done some stuff with it. But there's still more than I have to take care of. So, give me just a second. I'm going to slide that out of the way. Alright, I'm going to back up a little bit. I can't go up too far on this wall. Because my husband has a gun rack in here. And he refuses to move it. Because he said that I have taken over too much of the house already. <laughs> so anyway, this is where a big, the biggest portion of my yarn is. I got this, um, this little, this is what I'm talking about, like a, a dresser with bins. It's an Ikea rack thing that I found at the Habitat for Humanity for $7, which was a steal. But I really like it because I can just... Stand my yarn up on end. This is all my homespun type yarns in here for the most part. And then on this side, I have well, those are two new ones, so they just kind of got put in there. But a lot of this is the wool spun from Line Brand that I got on the dollar clearance they had. Um, yeah, I think all of that is wool spun. And if we come up here. I've got, um, this is a cake of homespun, because it wouldn't fit with my other ones. This is all, let's see, is this a number four? I don't know what this is. This is some karaoke yarn I got from a yarn thing. And this is all Heartland yarn. Then over here, I have some of my... These are kind of yarns that have a texture to them. So I have Shawl in the Ball. And I have this tech. It's actually called Texture Yarn. I got from Line Brand Clearance. And then I have a couple of. Um, I think this is called. This is a Red Heart. I don't remember. Unforgettable. That's what that is. I have two of those in there. So those yarns are kind of similar. In texture. Which is why I put them together. That's why. That's the way I organize my yarn usually. Is by texture and uh, weights if I can and here I have mandelas and some comfy cotton and then this is all sock yarn this actually came with a Mary Maxon kit but I won't make what's in the kit so I put it in here to be used for other things even though it's not the same weight <laughs> and then here's some cupcakes and then my ombre uh, life line brand so most of the stuff in here as you can see is line brand um it's one of my favorite brands of yarn even though i have a lot of others so up here on top is mostly worsted weight yarns so you can see i have if we look down in there i usually stand them up on end but those are some hobby lobbies and red hearts and this is I did some that were so big they were in a cake. So when they started trying to fall off my uh, winder, I just wrapped them up like a bun. <laughs> so then I have all that down in there is Red Heart. Um, and these on top are Karen cake. Karen, just simply soft. And then in this little bin here, I have this super bulk because it wouldn't fit in my um, bin over there. And it's part of a circle afghan I started and need to finish. This is an old bear that my Mima Tea Dotto made me that I've had forever. Um, and this is all worsted weight yarns. So this is some of the stuff I got in that Vermeer bag. And then if we look down there, there's another layer. All of that's Vanna Choice. Vanna's Choice. So... Like I said, I tend to keep my yarns grouped by weights versus anything else. Hold on. Sorry, I had to pause for my dog again. He is determined to bark at everybody in the neighborhood. Anyway, so now this stuff right here is actually cotton rope. 
that I use in my project bags and I use it to make baskets so but let's see I'm gonna think about this for a second I think that's no wait I've got one more bin to show y'all <laughs> I thought that was it but I'm gonna turn around here I'm gonna pause this so it's spin too fast because it's on the other side okay I have this one more bin this is like a fabric basket of sorts um I've just got this big thing of cotton sitting on top and then I have more of my bulky uh, weight yarn. This is either number five or number six. I have a lot of, this is um, uh, wool ease, thick and quick. And this is Burnett Softy Chunky over here. Um, in the back I have some Burnett Blanket yarn. And then up under all of this, and pull these out are all of my Karen cakes <laughs> I have them in three different colors and that that yellow goldy looking color in there I have four of those and these are the two I just got on clearance at Michael and then I have let's see I had to take this out so you can see no oh, you're not gonna be able to see still it's buried but I have a let's see I have a green two of the green ones as well so I have yet to make anything with these but I love these things um I don't know why I just love the way they go together and so I collect them kind of but one day I'll make something out of them but let's see that is all of my yarn stash okay y'all that was all of my yarn stash that I had to show as I said it's stuck in little hidey holes all around my craft space um, I'm gonna get this edited and put up and I hope y'all enjoyed <laughs> seeing all my yarn uh, and I've, I've really enjoyed watching everyone else's yarn stash videos I still have some more to watch it's always interesting to see when you think you have a lot if maybe you don't have as much as somebody else or if you have more than someone else um most of this was accumulated over the past couple of years i've got to be honest because of watching youtube and getting online and finding newer yarns that i had never seen before because i live in a small town so my options for yarn are walmart or to drive 45 minutes away to maybe a michael's or joann's or hobby lobby so yeah, I didn't have as much yarn as fabric. I still have more fabric. I'm going to say I have more fabric than yarn still. But the yarn stash has grown quite substantially in the past couple of years. So thanks to YouTube. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's all for right now. As I said, my podcast will probably not be up until Sunday morning because... I'm going thrift store shopping in the morning and I don't know when I'll be back and then I'll have to record it. I wanted to wait till I went in, just in case I found something good to sh share with y'all. So I will see y'all then and I hope y'all are having a wonderful week and weekend. We're in the weekend, right? Yeah. Okay. Bye y'all.